Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.1 Beta 1 released to developers today and hopefully very soon to public beta testers. This was a very large install on my 13 Pro Max because anytime you're going from a public version to a beta version, it fully reinstalls the OS. So you can see it was 5.13 gigabytes on my 13 Pro Max. Now this was released alongside watchOS 9.1 Beta 1 along with tvOS 16.1 Beta 1. Also iPadOS 16 Beta 8, which is also iPadOS 16.1 Beta 2, which is a bit confusing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And the first change is you can see it says iOS version 16.1. With iOS 16, there was actually the build number next to it. Now we have to tap on it, and we can see the build number is 20B5045D. And this particular update does have some features and changes in it. The first thing we can't see is a modem update. That's significant since we haven't had one since iOS 16 beta 5. So if you're having issues with connectivity, hopefully this will improve some of that. But we do have a modem update in this particular update. There's also new features, and the first one is pretty significant for users of iPhone 10R, 11, 12 mini, and 13 mini. We now have the battery percentage. So they finally brought this. Apparently it wasn't a user interface issue. They've heard everyone's complaint. And if we go into settings, you can see under battery, we'll go down under battery, it says battery percentage. We can finally turn that on on the other devices. For whatever reason, it took them a little longer on that device. Now, if we go into the battery settings on a different phone here, you'll see it says battery health and charging. And under battery health and charging, it now has a clean energy charging option. This may not be on all phones, but what it says is in your region, iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emission electricity is available. iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can reach full charge before you need to use it. So that's something they've added within the battery settings itself. Again, it may not be available in all regions though. Now, one thing that will make a lot of people happy also is they've changed the way you customize your wallpaper. So if we press and hold on the lock screen, maybe we want to customize, tap on customize, and you'll see it now splits the wallpaper. So we can quickly go back to the lock screen or we can customize the home screen. So if we hit done, we'll go back to customize, go back to home screen and then you have all those options here. So they finally updated this. I thought it was a little bit messy and confusing before, so that's been changed. Also, if we customize our lock screen, maybe go to change a widget, you'll see there's four rows of widgets here, and if we compare it with the previous version of iOS 16, we'll go in, not all phones will have four rows, but they did make an update to the calendar widget. So the calendar widget actually shows the calendar app icon now, where before it just showed a calendar. One of the big features with iOS 16 that's coming later is live activities, and it looks like they've enabled it in iOS 16.1. So when watching live sports, if we go over to our TV app here, within TV, if we go to live sports, tap on the live sport, we now have the option to follow. So we can follow and it says follow to get live updates and play by plays during this game. So we'll tap on follow. And if we go back into our settings, there's a new setting for this. There's actually two of them. The first one is in face ID and passcode. So we'll go into that. And if we scroll all the way down, you'll see that we have a live activities option for the lock screen to show when it's locked. So if you don't want it to show when it's locked, make sure you turn that off. Also, we have the same setting in our TV app. So if we go down to TV, then again, scroll down, you'll see live activities. If we turn this on, and if we go to our lock screen, we'll see live sports scores. However, this does not seem to be working 100% of the time. So we'll see more of this in the future, but a lot of live activities will be coming with updates to different apps. So once apps are updated, they should support that. Also in settings, we'll go back here, and if we go under general, under general is a new option for matter accessories. iOS 16.1 adds support for matter accessories, and this is something Apple talked about before, and it does have some bugs we'll talk about in a moment, but that's something that they've actually added here. Also, if we take a screenshot, so we'll just snap a screenshot here, and then if we tap on done, we no longer have a menu at the bottom. They've moved the menu to the upper left. So it looked a little bit different before when you took a screenshot, now they've made it a little easier. So on the previous version with iOS 16, you can see that here, it looks a little bit different. Something else we've been waiting for with iOS 16 is iCloud shared photo library. This is technically not enabled in iOS 16, but seems to be working in iOS 16.1. So if we go to our settings, 
then go to Photos, you'll see we have Shared Library. So that's something they've updated and it looks to be working now. Another thing they've added is a little change in accessibility. If we go to Accessibility, then go to Touch and then Assistive Touch, scroll down until we see Use Game Controller. Now with iOS 16, we gained Buddy Controller and this talks more about that. Before we could turn this on, but now we have a Learn More button and it talks more about Assistive Touch with a Game Controller, such as use the left thumbstick to move the system pointer or use the right thumbstick to move the system pointer at a slower speed. So it gives you all of the different things that it can do now. And there are additional wording changes throughout. So a few different things, and again, thanks to Steve for helping me out with that. Now there are some bugs in 16.1 still. One of them has to do with settings. So if we tap done here, and then we go back to general and then software update, we'll typically get an error every time we check for a software update. It just says unable to check for update. I tried to reboot and it didn't seem to work. So there is a bug there with that. Additionally, they did fix what seems to be a problem that was causing Real Racing 3 to not work properly. That's working on tvOS 16.1 and iOS. I didn't have an issue on iOS, but some people told me that it's working now properly for them. And then also that weird music issue is still there. So maybe you're playing an album. If you're playing the music from the lock screen and you tap on the album, it opens properly. But then if you tap it, when it drops back into the media player, it sort of has that bounce again that doesn't seem to be right. The bounce seems to be timed more for the dynamic island on iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. So there's still an odd bug there with the UI and they haven't resolved that yet. Now if we go into their notes in the feedback app, within feedback, go to recent activity and then iOS 16.1 beta release notes, there are some issues with matter accessories like I mentioned. So to pair matter accessories, a profile must first be installed on your device. And so this is something that should improve over the next couple of betas but they have resolved an issue with room plan where it says existing surfaces are now updated in the did add delegate function. And again, there's more known issues as well, mostly developer focused, but there are some known issues in here. As far as if you should install iOS 16.1 beta one right away, I'd probably hold off for a little bit to see if there's additional bugs that are going on. I will mention that performance is pretty good overall, but the phone was very hot after updating, much hotter than it was with iOS 16. Now granted it did install a full OS update and had to process a lot of things in the background, but generally was very, very warm. So you may want to hold off a little bit for that. The same is true for battery. We don't know how battery life is going to be over the next few days, so it will take a little bit to know that, but we'll wait for it over the next few days and then talk about it maybe on the weekend or a later follow-up video when we see what battery life is like overall running that. But battery health hasn't changed for me, still seems to be pretty good, and no issues, still at 98%. Now as far as iOS 16 beta 2 release, I would think at this point probably a couple weeks away. It's possible we could see it as soon as next week, but I would think probably a couple weeks away, maybe we'll have an iOS 16.0.1 in the meantime if they need to fix anything else. However, Apple has said that iPadOS 16 is releasing in October, along with macOS Ventura. So we can see probably a few more betas and then a final release sometime in October, maybe around that iPad event that's actually expected by Apple. Of course, on Friday is the iPhone 14 release with the 14, 14 Pro and Pro Max with some Apple watches and more. So we're looking out for those as well. Now, as far as benchmarks go, I did run a benchmark on this. Let's see where it went. We'll go in here and you'll see, actually it's not quite good right away. So you'll see the single core was 1,738, multi-core was 4,477. That's not quite good. It did improve a little bit. The phone was quite hot when I ran it the first time. So I ran it again and this is what I got. So it will improve over time, I think. But again, it may take a few days for everything to process in the background. We'll check out the storage bug and more, more in the follow-up to see if it's actually improved, maybe give it a few days to see what's happened there. But overall, you can see it's a little bit lower than it was before, but it doesn't feel any slower, so it seems to be performing all right. Now, if you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And also, if you picked up an iPhone 14, I'd love to hear which version you got and which color as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.